and welcome to exchangeformedia.com. My guest today is one of the most trusted marketers of India. He is the man who crafts the marketing strategy for country's most reliable automobile brand, Maruti Suzuki. Please welcome Mr. Shashank Srivastav, Senior Executive Director at Maruti Suzuki India Limited. Thank you Shashank for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. I have been chasing you for quite some time. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So, uh, Shashank, uh, as I said in my intro, you are one of the most respected and senior marketer in India. Can you take us through your professional journey? Uh, well, I joined uh, Maruti Suzuki a long time back. Uh, 15 years, I read. Well, no, actually uh, 30, uh, 33 years. Uh, 15 back, years just in this role. Yes. Yeah. So, just after, um, just after uh, my college. So, I did my MBA from IIM Ahmedabad. Uh, I am an engineer, by the way, and then subsequently did my MBA from Ahmedabad, joined Maruti Suzuki. And the reason I joined uh, Maruti Suzuki was that uh, it was uh, the only uh, professional automobile company and I had a passion for automobile. And subsequent to that, the journey has continued. And uh, uh, I have been through various uh, functions. So when I joined, I joined uh, um, in the MD's uh, 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 office. And uh, subsequently, corporate planning, uh, exports as well, and for about five, six years in international exports uh, uh, recently, and then uh, uh, for domestic as well. So, uh, Shashank, we, uh, we fest we've just wrapped up festive season. Uh, we had, uh, I mean, of course, Christmas is yet to come, but yeah. uh, for India, mm -hmm. Navratri, Diwali, Dhanteras, mm -hmm. they're just mm -hmm. uh, the best season for mm -hmm. automobile sector. Mm -hmm. How was it? And uh, if you can give us some numbers, like, how did it go for you? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, by the way, for festive season in automobile um, is uh, because India is a diverse country. So, the uh, intensity of festivities is different in different parts of the country. Um, it actually starts from Onam in Kerala. Okay. And that is always on the 17th of August. Okay. So, the start is always 17th August. And the end is uh, in, in uh, and the end is at the Bhaiduj, which is uh, two days after Diwali. So, that ended this time on 15 November. So, that end keeps varying. Start is always 17th August. Now, interestingly, this year, it, we had a longish festive season, starting from 17th August till 15 November, which was like about uh, 89 days. Last year, it, the same period was 71 days. So, it, it, they're not like like to like comparable, but for the first time ever in the passenger vehicle industry, this time in this season, this festive season, the uh, industry clocked the 1.1 million, uh, only the first time it has crossed the 1 million mark. And that was actually a big growth over the previous year, uh, almost like a 40% growth. Um, but of course, if you adjust for the extra number of days, there were 17 extra days this year. So the growth was about 17%. Uh, so in all ways you look at it, whichever way you look at it, it has been a fantastic uh, uh, season and in fact uh, a fantastic year so far for the auto industry passenger vehicles. Uh, I was when I was doing my research, I uh, came across this number that over over two lakh twenty six thousand uh, bookings are pending mm. uh, for Maruti. Correct. And your SUV in particular is in high demand. Mm. So when there is a gap in demand and supply, uh, advertising is often put on hold. You know because mm. you're not able to mm. deliver what mm. already mm. is in demand. Mm. Do you also follow this strategy? Do you also hold back your advertising during these times? No, no, absolutely not. Actually, um, um, uh, for us, uh, as I'm, um, I am, I, I, as I think it should be, uh, there is uh, the advertising has got many roles. One of the role is uh, building up the brand and establishing the core of the brand in the minds of the consumer. Now that is something which is on running. It's a long term. Um, uh, uh, I mean, it's a long term uh, target objective. To be achieved and therefore you can't cut back on that. Uh, however, there is also a portion which is tactical advertising, which is basically at the lower end of the funnel when you want to push the consideration into actual sales and that tactical advertising might vary depending on the, uh, you know, the, the, the market situation. But uh, I would say this year, the tactical advertising is a little less. However, uh, in terms of the overall, because we have larger number of brands, we have introduced four new brands very recently. So, the overall spends have actually been higher uh, than previous years. Uh, according to your recent numbers, you have shown better growth in rural this year, almost 12% mm. uh, compared to urban, which was 8%. Yeah. What is, has that changed in advertising or media mix? 
Yes, it 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 does. In fact, um, uh, you know, uh, this rural um, uh, um, phenomena we noticed uh, uh, almost like seventeen, eighteen years back. Uh, we, we we had a special cell which uh, started uh, you know specifically looking at rural sales, um, which was I think in two thousand seven or so. So that's like about uh, sixteen years back. Every year since then, rural uh, growth has been higher than urban growth, except for one year. I think it was two thousand twelve thirteen. Where the urban growth was higher compared with the rural growth, but otherwise every year, and the, and the reason is rural incomes are rising faster than urban incomes. There's a lot of push from the government in terms of infrastructure spending, the accessibility. So generally speaking, and we have had some very good run with the monsoon. The last five six years have been normal. Last year was just a six percent less than 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 the previous year, but otherwise very good. So the, that has fueled a lot of demand in the rural areas, and uh, because of this. Uh, we see the percentage of sale in the industry of rural is actually gaining ground, and it's around thirty thirty two percent of the industry. But for Maruti Suzuki, it's about forty four percent. So that's a large chunk. So obviously, the media habits for uh, people in the rural area are a little different. The media consumption habit uh, is a little different from the urban areas. Uh, at the same time, there are a lot of overlaps as well. So yes, we do um, uh, for reaching out to rural. Uh, Uh, areas and rural consumers we do have a different strategy and in fact uh, it's not just a communication strategy it's also how you approach the customers so like in rural areas it's very important if you know the person so you have to depend a lot on your manpower to reach not just a advertising thing but uh, otherwise yes the communication strategy itself for rural areas is a bit different from urban areas Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, for other sectors, rural uh, consumption is kind of low this year, right? Mm-hmm. There, there have been complaints that while urban has picked up, rural is still mm-hmm. uh, not showing mm-hmm. much consumption, mm-hmm. especially in FMCG mm-hmm. and other. Mm-hmm. So how is it uh, different for automobile? Yeah, so um, actually the uh, the uh, consumption group mm-hmm. uh, for automobile in rural areas is actually a little different mm-hmm. from the consumption group for in the rural areas for F- FMCG. Or even two wheelers. So two wheelers have recently started doing well. As also, by the way, last uh, report on FMCG is also positive for uh, rural. Okay. Um, of course, I know in the early part of the year it was the reverse. And uh, I believe that in the rural segment for the car market, uh, there is a, a large population which mm-hmm. whose behavior is not uh, exactly the same as it comes to the behavior of those people who uh, who who buy FMCG goods, for example. So um, I believe that uh, that is causing that divergence in the reporting pattern for uh, sales for cars and uh, sale for FMCG groups and even for two wheelers, for example. So unlike m- many of your competitors, uh, Maruti for last many years doesn't have a celebrity face hmm. selling it. Hmm. So is there a particular strategy behind it, or uh, what? I mean, Actually, what's the um, behind yeah, this? yeah. So, um, um, no, I think for automobile, um, as for some many products, it's possible to have um, if you are trying to build up a very uh, a good awareness in a very short time to take uh, support of uh, celebrity uh, faces. Also, um, even if that was not the objective, uh, it does support the brand uh, in terms if there is a good good brand fit with the. Characteristics for which the celebrity is known. By the way, we have for our arena the uh, brand ambassador, which is uh, uh, which is uh, Varun Dhawan. Uh, we have for Nexa Ranbir Singh, um, which is uh, who is the brand ambassador. And for our True Value, the used car business that we have, we have uh, R R Rao uh, okay. as a thing. So we actually using them. And in the past, in some advertising, also we have used. I remember uh, 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 there was a van which we had, which was Varsa. Uh, we used Amitabh Bachchan for uh, um, and and uh, Abhishek Bachchan in, uh, for 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 that. But he was not a brand ambassador, but just uh, uh, you know for that ad- advertisement we had used. As also um, in the p- previous uh, uh, this thing, we had some discussions earlier uh, with uh, for our SX4. Which mm-hmm. is uh, our sedan, sporty sedan, mm-hmm. where we were discussing with uh, John Abraham. Uh, mm-hmm. Of course, that didn't go through. Uh, but yes, uh, I think the, the important thing for marketers to understand is that um, uh, if the characteristics for, of that ambassador that has to match closely with the brand values that you have. 
um, and otherwise it can go very wrong. Also, we have to watch out for what else he is advertising for. Okay. For example, there are some uh, really busy um, uh, brand ambassadors or these famous faces who uh, actually are uh, doing maybe products which are like 15, 20 products at one time. Mm -hmm. And those product categories could be quite irrelevant to your product category. Okay. And therefore, that is something which uh, obviously we look at once we decide. But more or less, um, your observation is right. We don't extensively use mm -hmm. Uh, so like I, some I of the brands too. Uh, yeah. uh, many of mm. your mm. recent campaigns, and mm. I, I didn't find ah, any. So we don't any, extensively uh, use, as I said, yeah. Yeah. brand. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. a, a star face yes, there. Yes. So uh, I was reading your uh, many interviews mm. where you talked about a Eureka moment, you know, mm. uh, for Maruti, mm. uh, which was the whole launch of Veganar. Mm. Can you take us through that journey again? Mm. So I think that Eureka mo moment is the first Eureka moment uh, mm -hmm. for, for me as a marketer and for Maruti Suzuki generally at that point of time. We have had many Eureka mo mo moments subsequently. But that moment I was talking was the introduction of the Wagoner, which was the highest selling car in Japan. And you know, at that time it was uh, competing with the Santro, which had been introduced earlier. Uh, the It had a tall boy design. The first time tall boy design came in India was the Santro and the first tall boy design which Maruti Suzuki introduced was the Wagon yeah, okay. uh, In 93, it was introduced in Japan and it became the best seller. When we introduced it in India, we thought this is something which is going to be, because it's the best selling in Japan, it's going to be the best selling here as well. And uh, consumers would, uh, obviously, it's very logical. But uh, to our horror, we found that uh, there was very little traction for that brand. Um, and it took a lot of time for us to re-establish We sort of, we almost relaunched it. And uh, this is also, by the way, a classic, not a classic, it's a very rare case in India where a brand at the time of introduction doesn't do well and, and subsequently do. does very well. In fact, Wagonar is now the number one uh, selling brand for the last two years in the industry. So it's selling more than 200,000. Uh, uh, so you yeah. changed the design? Uh, design, a, a little bit on the product design uh, side because it, it, it was, you know, in that sense, we found out that uh, um, a good car in Japan may not necessarily be a good car for consumers in India because every country culture has its own likes and dislikes, which we have to be very careful about on the pricing front as well, as well as on the overall design, the, the, the product proposition, as they say. And... Uh, uh, for Wagonar, we did change design. The you know it, it was too 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 flat and uh, too blank, and therefore we introduced some elements. We couldn't change the basic design, but subsequent and uh, the additions which we had subsequently, we made sure that the interior design, the exterior was uh, as per the um, uh, tastes of the Indian consumer. So the Eureka moment, of course, which is always taught anyway in. Kotler's marketing and all your MBAs and all that you know, for marketing is that you have to be customer centric and uh, but it's very difficult to practice and uh, yeah, probably at that time and we had a long waiting queues if you remember Marty 800 had a long, you won't remember you're too young but it was it, it you know uh, long waiting queues we had the esteem which also had a, um, a huge waiting so uh, it's sort of you take customers sometimes for granted that uh, anything will sell because the basic functionality requirement is so high in a growing country and economy like India. But uh, that was not so. And that has helped us subsequently, and I call it the Eureka moment, because it's helped us subsequently when we launched new products to be going yes, exactly as per the consumer requirement and be did very conscious. Did you also conscious. change its marketing when it was relaunched? Yes, we did. Actually, both in How terms of, uh, yeah, so it became a little more experiential because people said, Mati Suzuki is fine, so we don't have to market the mother brand. But uh, in terms of uh, what this brand did, so um, we, we, uh, we positioned it subsequently as a brand which was um, uh, engineered well and very practical uh, 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 product to use. And that we appealed more to the rationality. Earlier, we were saying Japan stopped selling model that was the first ad i remember which was like not uh, pro properly well appreciated by consumers yeah so with the advent of digital era advertising has changed dramatically in the last decade how in particular has it changed for auto industry uh, what are few things that you're doing differently or now compared to yeah so so um, i'm glad you asked this question because it's changed hugely in the sense that uh, you know if you really research the car buying process 
uh, we have done extensive research. There are 26 touch points that consumer goes through when he buys a car. From the time when he thinks or he, she thinks about buying a car to the actual delivery. 24 of those touch points are now digitized. The only ones which are not so are the test drive and the actual mm -hmm. delivery, which yeah. obviously, so we call it digital actually, not purely digital. But um, uh, we have made the, uh, uh, the, the buying process uh, to be friendly to these digital savvy consumers. Uh, now, you know, almost 25% of the retails are through the digital platform. We have the, we are running the largest hyper local uh, program in the world in automobile for, uh, uh, you know, we're uh, at, at the lower end of the funnel. Even at the upper end of the funnel now, we are using it for building awareness, building uh, brands. and we are, So the mix of media itself has changed. Now about 30% of our spends, 27, 30% of our spends now are on the digital uh, front. A lot of change, of course. Financing now is, uh, by the way, on, uh, on, on, on digital platform, okay. which is like uh, the, yeah, we are the only company which are doing it in India. And it's giving us more than 50% of our retail uh, financing through that platform. So Shashanka, as I said in the beginning also, that you're one of the most experienced mm. marketers. Mm. So, uh, you know, when we uh, talk to younger marketers or uh, in general, it is assumed that younger ma marketers are uh, perhaps better equipped at technology mm. and they would understand mm. digital better. Mm. What are a few qualities you feel uh, they don't uh, have that, mm. you know, uh, seasoned marketers mm. like you have if some piece of advice you would have for younger marketers so let me talk like an old man which is that the, <laughs> I, I feel experience man. experience man yeah. is the patience uh, uh, that brand is cannot be built overnight and it is not not just about mm -hmm. communication or technology mm -hmm. it's uh, the whole 360 which you have to take into account when you build a brand mm -hmm. and uh, it, 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 i think the the great strength which youngsters have is that they have a much more uh, open perspective um, because our society now is more globalized and therefore the exposure is much more than the times earlier. That's a very positive for you. But of course, we have to see uh, that you don't forget the basics in this maze of technology and the, and the desire to use technology all the time. You sometimes put the basic objective, which is uh, fulfilling the actual needs and desires of consumers uh, at the back. That site, I think, gets lost out sometimes when you are too much focused on technology and pushing. So that's one advice I would, but uh, evergreen or uh, advice is that you have to be customer centric at all times. So, and how do you keep yourself relevant? Like, how do experienced marketers keep themselves re yeah, so, relevant? Yeah. So first of all, we must realize in our minds that things are changing and things are changing very fast. That realization is something which many experienced marketers miss out. Because they think they know enough, they have seen enough. So one is to be uh, grounded and uh, uh, please realize that things are changing. So the realization itself is a one big uh, uh, factor. for. And then you have to update yourself both in terms of the knowledge of the technology, the new media vehicles people use and uh, the trends in the consumers which might be. And also the more you are in touch with consumers, uh, younger or current customers, the more perspective you build and uh, that is something which uh, I have always practiced which is to always be in touch with the actual consumer and have a great interaction with the younger people because you have a lot to learn from them and uh, they are also um, having a perspective which can be totally different from yours. So understanding that is very important. I think that's the reason, that's the way which I have been trying to keep myself relevant in the current scenario. So my last question uh, is also something that I would want to personally learn from you. The corporate sector is highly competitive mm. and uh, very cutthroat at times. I've always seen you smiling and very calm. How do you manage to do that? Yeah, so I think de-stressing is very important uh, in professional life. And uh, the thing is that uh, uh, you have to um, cut yourself off from that regular work stress and this has to be done every day so it's not as if you can be you know going on a holiday uh, for a week after two months of heavy stress you have to somehow release the uh, pressure or stress every day so for me the what works is uh, uh, walking um, generally uh, spending some time with the family um, playing chess which also focus your attention away from uh, Who do you play it with? Uh, so you, we have these days uh, software. 
okay, where you have this uh, yeah, yeah. and then you um, the thing is um, uh, the problem with that uh, in my case is that i become very competitive there also <laughs> because there are levels uh, if we can choose a master, a grandmaster, and so on, and then you know you see, yeah, yeah I am beating the masters. Let, let me try, you know, the so that sort of thing. But of course, you have to be very conscious of that. And of course, um, um, I do keep reading uh, stuff, something which is not related to automobile. Like for me, reading uh, about uh, origin of universe is uh, one of my favorite topics uh, to read. And sometimes I, of course, uh, um, uh, do watch. Uh, I'm interested a little bit in. Um, uh, poetry, for example, so uh, some shairi and all that we I keep watching on YouTube just to uh, because that gives you a really good uh, uh, feeling, and uh, that's something which I enjoy. So uh, we'll come back to that poetry because <laughs> I I uh, know you're very fond <laughs> of it, and that's where what something we connect on. So uh, we'll now move to rapid fire. Uh, I have five questions for you, okay, uh, and I'll uh, want quick answers. Uh, your favorite Maruti car? Uh, it's the Grand Vitara. Your favorite Maruti campaign? It's the uh, India comes home in the Maruti. That uh, general campaign for a brand, overall brand, yeah. Your favorite Maruti office? Uh, this can be globally, like Suzuki office also. Yeah, but for me it is that old office which we have, we, we no longer uh, use in uh, Connaught Place. Uh, and that reason was only that you had, I was very young when I joined. And, there was, a, there was a lot of good samosas and uh, the saga shops down, so that was the that's the only reason why it still remains my favorite. A Suzuki car that you would like to see launched in India? So there is this car, uh, of course now I don't think it can be launched in India, it's called the Cappuccino. Uh, it's a small car, sporty, very nice design and uh, that's something which would look fantastic on Indian roads. So why it is not being launched? I think it's rapid fire, I should not ask you that. <laughs> Uh, and your favorite Urdu couplet that you can recite for us. Look, Urdu shayari ka pata hai kya hai ki agar aapne shuruat kari, to phir it will go on. Ha, to ek tam ek tam hadi tak jayegi. But you know uh, the uh, reason I said why Urdu shayari is like uh, good, um, uh, it 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 gives you that feeling uh, uh, which is like you may learn something uh, with experience over long period, maybe uh, the whole lifetime. And they put it in uh, into, two into two lines, and it, that sticks with you. It's great. And uh, uh, for example, when you uh, uh, when you uh, go through your uh, uh, your life at different points of time, and it's competitive, of course, you will have some people always uh, uh, um, uh, rooting for you. There's some people who are wanting to put you down. The thing is that people who put you down are also serving a purpose. Because you have to uh, be sure that uh, their feedback is taken and you have to be close to just to take the negative uh, thing, but not to be moved and be under pressure from on, 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 on the uh, negativity. Uh, like uh, Ahmed Faraz, for example, put this in the, and this is something which I am very conscious about because this is, I'm, I'm sure for everybody um, that, um, <coughs> and he put it in very, uh, that is that you have to be close to those people and also wish them well because they are actually doing good good to you not avoid them and uh, pray for them so it goes something like this umr bhar kaun nibhata hai taluk kitna umr bhar kaun nibhata hai taluk kitna meri ae meri jaan ke dushmano tujhe allah rakhe which is like yeah so you um, i mean it's about um, uh, it's great because uh, that support gives you in a very, very short two lines how you must treat people even if they are, uh, you know, uh, not for you or because they also serve a purpose. Of course, there are other uh, Ahmed Faraz uh, uh, Ghazal and with a lot of share which, is, which uh, you know, if we go on. Mm -hmm. um, no, no, sure, we can have one. Oh, okay, more. so, so let, let me see if I can, you know, I just... Uh, but thoda sa Urdu usme thodi people will google ha usne sakoot e shab mein bhi apna payam rakh diya usne sakoot e shab mein bhi apna payam rakh diya hijr ki raat baam hijr ki raat maah e tamam rakh diya then it continues 
आमद दोस्त की नवीद आमद दोस्त की नवीद कुए वफा में गर्म थी हमने भी दिल चराग सा सरे शाम रख दिया इट गोज कंटिन्यू फाइव सो यू विलिसन शिद्दत तशनगी शिद्दत तशनगी में भी गैरत महकशी रही शिद्दत तशनगी तो यू आर वेरी प्यासा लाइक सिंह शिद्दत तशनगी में भी गैरत महकशी रही उसने जो फेरी नजर हमने भी जाम रख दिया तेन देखो ये मेरे ख्वाब थे देखो ये मेरे जख्म हैं देखो ये मेरे ख्वाब थे देखो ये मेरे जख्म हैं मैंने तो सब हिसाब जहाँ सरे आम रख दिया लास्ट टू दिस थिंग उसने नजर नजर में ही ऐसे भले सुखन कहे उसने नजर नजर में ही ऐसे भले सुखन कहे मैंने तो उसके पैरों में सारा कलाम रख दिया मक्ता फाइनल मक्ता दैट इज वेयर और फराज चाहिए कितनी मोहब्बतें तुझे और फराज चाहिए कितनी मोहब्बतें तुझे माओ ने तेरे नाम पे अपने बच्चों का नाम रख दिया ब्यूटीफुल आई आई डोंट थिंक आई कैन हैव आई शुड से एनीथिंग एंड यू नो डिस्टर्ब दिस व्हाट वी हैव क्रिएटेड एंड कंक्लूड सो शशांक थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर स्पीकिंग टू अस and please uh, do keep visiting us often so that we have something new to understand and learn i've never heard this uh, poetry before thanks for talking to me thank you thank you very much